Now then, hope you're all doing well. It's that weird time between Christmas and New Year where nobody knows what day it is, what time it is, or whether to not to drink a can of Stella at 10 o'clock in the morning. Anyway, if you've clicked on the video, you're obviously here for one reason, and that's to see my thoughts on the OEX Fathom EV400 sleeping bag. Now, I've been putting this sleeping bag through its paces for the past nine months, through all conditions, different applications, tent camping up in the mountains, hammock camping in the woods, different temperatures ranging from summer, spring, and coming into winter. So what I wanted to do was give you my insight on how this sleeping bag worked for me. Now I've been seeing quite a lot of people buying this bag at the moment and putting their pictures up on Facebook with their kit hoping to get out for a winter sleep. Now I can't blame them. OEX claim for it to be a four season sleeping bag. Here you go. Let's see if you can see that. There you go. There's the stats. We're going to go through them in a second but they claim for it to be a four season sleeping bag. It is a synthetic sleeping bag. Four seasons? I don't quite think so. So what we're going to do is we're going to look through the comfort ratings, comfort, limit and extreme. So OEX claim that this bag can be comfortable down to minus one degrees. Now, of course, if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that we have had this down to freezing, this sleeping bag. We had it down to freezing up at Sprinkling Tarn and we know it was freezing because one of the guys' tents got condensation all on the inside and that condensation froze. So at least zero degrees we were looking that night. It didn't perform well. I woke up at 2 a.m. in the morning, absolutely freezing cold. I had to put my down jacket on and then you managed to get back to sleep, but I was awake every hour being feeling cold anyway, down in my feet area, my legs. Um, yeah, I just, it, it, it didn't perform well down to zero. But even more worrying is our hammock camp that we went on to the Peak District. It only got down to four degrees, five degrees, and I was freezing in that hammock again, early hours when the temperature drops. I did have a wool blanket to be able to put over the top of me, which did add a level of thermal protection for me. I was warm when that was on top, but unfortunately it kept sliding off and I was waking up. Now, in my defence, I did have a DD Hammocks under blanket on the hammock, and that worked perfectly underneath. There was no cold coming from underneath, it was just from on top. So, the rating of minus one for comfort, I'd say it's got to be more. Five to six degrees, it's gonna, you're going to be comfortable. You'll get a good night's sleep down to five to six, which we have had that as well up in Scotland. And yeah, I did get a pretty good sleep, I was okay. Now, their limit saying minus eight, yeah... I'd probably say that's going to be your extreme, really. Um, their OEX are claiming that their extreme is minus 26. Minus 26 degrees in this sleeping bag. You aren't coming out alive. You're certainly not sleeping. But no, that, that's a bit of a worry. So let's have a look at the stuff sack first that it comes in. It's actually really high quality nylon. It has these compression straps here, which means you can compress it right down, make it fit into your pack. So I'll have a little go of that now. Oh, Sean, you should have prepped for this. There you go. Not too bad. It does compress down pretty well for a four-season bag. However, I think as I've probably given away, it's not a four-season bag. Also, I stopped using the compression sack pretty quickly because... Stuff in this kind of size, you know, it's it's as compressed as it's going to get, really. Stuff in that kind of size in your pack, it's an awkward shape. You're going to have dead space around the sleeping bag, therefore you're going to lose room in your pack. For me, the most efficient way to pack a sleeping bag is, is to just do away with the stuff sack, ram it into the bottom of your bag, stuff it right in there, fill all the spaces. Of course, that's not possible on a day when it's raining, unless you've got a waterproof pack. So two of the straps actually have buckles on them. So undo two of the buckles, top comes off, and then you just have a normal cinch cord there. So we'll get it out of the bag and we'll show you what it's like. So first impressions, feels very nice, very soft. It's a lovely material has single-sided zip. That's the 
bottom and that's the top. Let's have a feel inside. Yeah, pretty much the same, same material. Nice and soft. Again, I did find that with this. It is a comfortable feel against the skin. Okay, so we've got it out now in the living room. Yeah, let's have a look at some of the features. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is actually the loft. And as you can see, there is none. Um, you know, this one has probably been used twice, I would say. It's not been stored compressed. It's only been compressed once or twice. It's been stored in its normal normal bag that it comes with. And again, it's a synthetic bag, so there's no particular need to keep it you know, in a looser bag like you would with a down bag. Next, what we're gonna look at is the zip entrance is actually, as if you're lying in the bag, it's on the right hand side. Now for some people that might work, for others it might be a bit of a pain. Now they only do it in one side zip. Um, you know, so that sort of determines which way you've got to lie in your tent. If you've got a, a left exit tent only with one door on the left hand side, then you know, you're gonna struggle with this particular bag. However, it wasn't really a problem for me, it was fine. Obviously to unzip it, just unzip. So that was pretty good, no snags on that. So what OX have done with this is actually put some tougher material here. As you can see, this material is very thin and this material is tougher. And I guess what that's for is to stop the zip getting caught in the material. However, what they haven't thought about is the outside, which is still soft. So I've snagged that quite a few times. I've been stuck in my sleeping bag, um, you know, freezing cold. It's not really what you want. However, I'm sure plenty of other sleeping bags are pretty much the same. Again, on the outer side, they put some uh, some much thicker black nylon and again what well, that's for is to stop the zip getting caught however as i've said it doesn't fully eliminate it you do have to be careful with it as you would do with any other sleeping bag well that is a feature that i liked on a sleeping bag it is it's pretty good next we're going to look at the hood itself now the hood isn't exactly the biggest the biggest hood out of all the sleeping bags okay it's not the, not a bad opening for your face and what you can do here is you can pull on this toggle and then you can cinch it right in However, what you can't do is get your pillow in the hood as well. So your pillow has to be external, whereas on some of the other bags, what you can do, the hood is big enough to be able to get your pillow in there and your head and cinch in. It's not the end of the world if you go for something like one of the Trekology pillows, it straps to your mat. However, with my Sea to Summer Eros Ultralight pillow, I had issues with losing the pillow in the middle of the night. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the internal dimensions of the sleeping bag, because that's important. Especially for a guy of my size, I'm six foot three, six foot four, and I'm around 16 stone. So I'm quite wide on the shoulders, and you know, comfort inside the sleeping bag at night, it's, it's kind of important, you know. So OX claim for the internal dimensions to be 212 centimeters long and 77 centimeters wide, and that might be a bit too narrow for me. I certainly found during the summer months when I was using the bag that I felt kind of cramped. I couldn't really move my arms too much. However, as I said, I am a bigger guy. So if you're not on the broad side like myself, you'll be absolutely fine. But what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get in the bag and I'm gonna test it out for size for you. Well, I'll zip myself in. Use the inside of the zip to zip myself in. <laughs> and it's coarse on the inside. There we go, we're in. So yeah, it fits, my head fits in. The only downside to the fit is that it doesn't fit the pillow in. My feet are kind of restricted at the end. It's not a full on mummy sleeping bag, but it is tapered at the end. Uh, so I do struggle to sort of move my feet around. But again, what do you expect for the price that you pay for this kind of bag? Right, now to get out. Because I'm sweating. Uh. As you can see, it is, it is more of a mummy shape. 
What I'll do now, we'll go into the studio, dining room, and we'll finish off with a few more of my opinions on the bag and a couple of experiences that I've had with it. Okay, so one last thing to mention, and it's probably a downside on my part. Um, as I mentioned, I use this for nine months. OX claim it to be a four season bag, and I was using it in the summer. So there's one thing for you. I was far too hot in the summer. Before we've even got into proper winter, I'm far too cold. So what I would call this bag is probably a crossover bag. It's cheap, it's £50 at the moment on Go Outdoors. So I'd recommend this bag as a crossover bag. One to be used in spring and in autumn, when the temperatures are changing from summer and obviously into winter. Because in my opinion, it's far too hot for the summer and it's nowhere near warm enough for, for winter. So yeah, the 50 quid on Go Outdoors at the moment. I think if you're looking for, this is certainly not a four season bag by any stretch of the imagination, it's definitely a, a, a three season. Now OX also do a three season, an EV300 three season bag. Now I think you're probably better getting one of those, they can even come in quite a bit cheaper and you'll be certainly more comfortable in the summer months and you know what to expect in spring and autumn. Now would I buy this bag again? It's kind of hard to say no, <laughs> although I wouldn't. What I would buy next? If I was spending around 50 quid, maybe a little bit more on a, on a sleeping bag that's going to do three seasons, I'd probably go for one of the snug pack versions. I've seen a lot of good, good talk about snug pack and they can range from anything down from 50 quid right up to the few hundred pound mark. So in one way, yes, I would buy it again, but we have bought it again. Certainly good for the odd family camping trip. If you're not out in it and you're pushing it to the extremes, up in a mountain, after a long day's hiking. It works well. It does keep you warm for certain types of year, too warm in others. But it's a pretty well-made bag. Providing you take in everything that I've said during this video regarding not being able to put your pillow in the top here, the zip can be a bit sticky, and obviously the temperature rating's being well out, then it's an okay sleeping bag. It's not bad for the money at 50 quid. So as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it's give you a bit of insight into the EV400 sleeping bag from OX. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you want to see more content from my channel, don't forget to subscribe to be notified. Thanks for watching guys. Cheers.